Linda from the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation. Oh, I think we're, we're live on both. Uh, we're, we're doing our best here. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty at the hospital. Oh, I'm so glad I see a few thumbs up. That means a few of you are on. Um, so I've got one phone in my hand and Dr. Wainer's in front of the other one. Um, I'm not sure. I think we're on mine. Yeah, it looks we're like on both. we're on. We're, we're live. We're, we're live, live on there. both. All okay. right, so you talk there. Okay, talk so there. today, um, <coughs> uh, May is Vascular Birthmarks Month, and we want to welcome you all to uh, share your stories, post your, put on your birthmark pictures, and um, just be a part of our uh, awareness campaign for the month of May to let everybody know that not all vascular birthmarks go away and not all vascular birthmarks should be ignored. So today here with me is the world-renowned expert Dr. Milton Weiner. As you all know, he did my daughter Christine's surgery 23 years ago and he's done thousands of cases all over the world. It's enough, Linda. And um, <laughs> uh, you were, I'm just waiting for people to come on. So oh, we have. So see, I'm not, I'm not seeing them on here. Okay, um, oh wait, to see who our viewers are, swipe to the left. Oh, okay. All right, swipe to the left. All right, I'm, so anyways, Dr. Weiner, can you see some comments coming in? Because I can't ten, see any. Ten people. Ten watching. people are watching. Okay, I'm going to try to see if I can. Okay, we can start taking your questions. Natalie Vaden, Vedan joined. So please start sending your questions in for Dr. Weiner. Again, we're trying to work a little bit around some technical issues. Now you see yourself, but I'm... Um, um, so Scott, I see you're there. Do you see me and Dr. Weiner, or do you just see me, Scott? Let me know, Scott. Um, because Scott's already posted, hi, Doc, hi, Linda, and hi, Dr. Weiner. I'm just trying to see if people can see both of us. Oh, just me. So that means this is the one that's live. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So, so there's Dr. Weiner. Um, okay. I think leave yeah. it up like yeah. that. That's yep. good. Go ahead. All right. righty. Okay. Okay. So now, can you see Dr. Weiner now? Danny, can you see Dr. Weiner? And Scott, you should be able to see Dr. Weiner now. Uh, I'm waiting for a response. I hope You're it's. Yeah, I just hope we're not losing it. Yes. yes. Okay, great. So, okay, um, we're ready to take your questions. Please post your questions. Yes, so it's coming across here. Okay. All right. All right, so. Any questions, um, you, you'll have to. Yeah, I'm seeing some questions, so I, do? <laughs> I don't know. Here, hold this Why they're looking at you, and let me just. So, um, oh, they, they're just saying they can see you, but I think that you're seeing the same ones. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to take this out. Okay. Oops. Sorry we're having some technical difficulties. Let's see if you can lean that. That's all right. I'll hold it. It's not a big because um, I can hold then it. I can see the questions. All right. Ten comments so far. We're not seeing the comments. I'm going to see why I'm not. My daughter has had several treatments with PDO. Her cheek is very resistant, and our doctor recommended we switch to Alexandrite. She's nine months old. Okay, that's, uh, that's a good point, and that's a good starting point. About somewhere around 10 to 20 percent of Port Wine fans are resistant to treatment. They don't respond. They don't respond well to any form of treatment. Some people will switch to Alexandrite or some other laser or some other technique. Unfortunately, Alexandrite doesn't seem to offer much of an advantage. There's a risk of scarring with Alexandrite, and I think the risk is slightly higher than it would be with a cast star laser. And there is no confirmed, uh, tried and tested way to treat somebody with a port wine fan resistance. So my advice would be to wait. There are other modalities around the corner. Uh, people are with something called PDP, 
issues. There are certain drugs which may be useful. And so it's possible that something comes up. But at this point, I wouldn't advise switching to Alexandra. I think that uh, the risk of scarring is greater. And I don't really believe that it offers much in the vaccine. So Dr. Wayne, we have two questions that are similar. One wants to know if you go to Berlin, and the other one wants to know if you go to Ontario. Yeah, I go to Berlin every two months. In fact, I'll be there the end of next month. And uh, I'm happy to arrange to see patients. I do not go to Ontario. Uh, my in-laws live in Ontario, <laughs> so I visit them, but uh, no, I don't. But maybe you could see them. Um, Alicia wants to know if there's any updates on research for stubborn port wine, a topical treatment, or a new laser. Um, for stubborn port wine stain, there are topical treatments. At this point, there's two treatments that have been Can you not hear? Am, am I holding the thing? No, I think you're okay. I just want to... Oh, there. there. All right. Okay, at this point, there are... Uh, two topical treatments which are somewhat useful. There's something called imiquimod and uh, then there's rapamycin which is a topical rapamycin. And uh, both of these seem to be useful. They're certainly being experimented with. Some people have reported uh, no improvement whereas others have reported some improvement especially with topical imiquimod. So those two modalities are a way to go. Certainly with uh, port wine stains, there is something called PDT, yeah. and PDT seems to be very, very uh, interesting. It's not FDA approved. And, uh, I turned up the, um, vo the speaker. Can you guys hear? Let me just make sure this... Maybe it's the speaker on this one is picking up the sound. And we should have brought you a computer. You can't do it from a computer. Can you guys hear now? Yes, yes. Okay, good. They can okay. hear? Yes, okay. So, there was another question. Oh, now yeah. I'm covering the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you see Dr. Weiner or can you see me? Because we have two devices going. Point me towards research for the topic. Topicals. So, uh, concerning research for topicals, there are two topicals. There's something called imiquimod, that's I-M-I-Q-U-I-M-O-D, and then there is topical rapamycin, which is R-A-P-A-M-Y-C-I-N. And uh, if you go to PubMed, you'll see several papers on these. I think there are a few more papers on imiquimod, and that seems to be more popular today. And it does, the way these treatments work is that they... Well, they can only see me. Okay. The way these treatments work is that they prevent vessels from coming back. So straight after a treatment, what happens is some of the blood vessels will start, or new blood vessels will form, and these imiquimod or rapamycin will act in preventing this from happening and in that way it enhances the treatment. But you can look it up online. There are some interesting So I'm I just wrote that she sent an email about her son from Lebanon and everybody's saying everything's good now. So I think they're saying on okay, both. I'm just fine. not sure which way yeah. one is working. Okay. So um, uh, if you don't get a response from me then uh, I think it's a good idea to send it to Linda, mm -hmm. and she'll prompt me and, and make sure that I get a response out. Yes. So please do that. But concerning uh, resistant port wine stains, it really is a problem, and uh, there is no uh, great solution. But um, I think the, the most important thing that we can do is we must realize that there are lights on the horizon, that there are new forms of treatment that are going to be available at some stage, and we will be able to do this. Oh, spell the topical again. Imiquimod is, yeah, it's I M 
I-Q-U-I-M-O-D, imiquimod. Um, the next person said that her son has a lymphangioma on the leg. Do you have any comments about treatment for lymphatic malformations of the leg or this one in the here. one in my hand? So let's just make see if we lose. Can you all let us know if you can see us now? Is this working? Slow. Can you all hear us and can you all see us? All right, let's just keep that going. Well, if they answer, case. it takes a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, now you'll, now you'll see us and hear no. us. No, okay. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know, one's, <coughs> they both say live, but one's picking. Trying. Yeah, there okay. we go. All right. I spoke with Dr. Linda the other day, yeah? Okay, uh, um, no, spoke it. with Dr. Linda the other day about two-year-old daughter who looks like she has clipotronane. No one will MRI her to see what's going on. Should we push? Oh, and I think you're the family that I mentioned to see him in Berlin and that he could order the imaging. It's yeah, yeah. So if I see you in Berlin, yeah. um, I can order imaging there. We can actually get it done very quickly within a day and uh, we should be able to see exactly what's going on. So if you do come to Berlin and uh, do want to get imaging done, we can do this. This and is not yeah, a the, problem. The mom sent me pictures, and the baby has, like, blotchy cutaneous staining on the leg. Yeah. In the perianal area, there's a slight discrepancy in the lower legs, mm -hmm. but she's not getting any accuracy of diagnosis. So okay, no problem. I told her to see yeah. you in Berlin, and it's the end of June that yes. you'll be there? Correct. Okay. Okay, now I see... Delia Rooney has joined us from uh, Ireland. Hi. I have arranged uh, to have your daughter. I've actually uh, shown your daughter's pictures to a colleague of mine who works with me, and we're ready to go ahead and do her surgery. So contact me again, and we'll set up a date. I think we should do it this summer, and we will be able to do this. So Mrs. Rooney, just contact me and we'll set this up. Okay. Um, your son has a tufted angioma. He started serolimus. Do you know how long they take to shrink? Yeah, the, the answer to that uh, concerning serolimus and tufted angiomas, read this one as well. Okay. Uh, it's, it's concerning this, we'll you should start to see a response within a few weeks. So, you know, if it is going to respond, and we know that tufted angiomas do respond. If it is going to respond, you should see something within a few weeks. So Christina Duncan is talking about her daughter has a port wine, but now the dermatologist thinks it might be a lymphatic lesion just under her eye. So it must be that there's some enlargement. Okay, if you send me a photograph and whatever information you have on it, I'll be able to take a look at it and, and give you some sort of advice. Uh, it should be easy to differentiate between a port wine stain and, um, and, and a lymphatic malformation. Um, Mara says that she has a birthmark, a hem she had a hemangioma, and she's getting plastic surgery right now with a skin graft mm -hmm. using silicone balloons. Um, about 30% removed of the hemangioma, you're still having surgery. Do you advise me to complete, I guess you mean complete the surgery? She'd have to send you pictures, right? Yeah, because I, you have to make sure of what, what it is. Yeah, I definitely have to see pictures. And Kristen, Kristen Torres, yeah, so your son's port wine stain, you do, we do sometimes see enlargement of a limb with just a simple port wine stain. So the way to see whether there is KTS or whether this is a port wine stain, unfortunately, you have to do an MRI. An MRI will tell you whether it's a simple port wine stain or KTS. Um, Kwa Chu said her daughter has had four NDAG treatments, her left side of her face and tongue, <coughs> but we've had no MR, but we want to go to Berlin to visit. Oh, my new. Oh, yeah, here we are. We we're back again. Sorry, everybody. I posted that we're having problems. 
Um, thank you, Missy, for pointing out that if your question is an answer, that, okay. Um, so your six-year-old son is scheduled to have Miatme procedure this month. His KT, his KT syndrome is in his penile area, bottom of his right leg. We met at the Vascular Birthmarks Conference in October. Um, his doctor is at Rady's Children's Hospital. Rady's Children's. Mm -hmm. They know he needs the procedure, but unsure of the effects it could have from his KT. Um, you know, if he's got a stenosis, if there is a stenosis of the uh, uh, meatus, then he must have a meatotomy. And uh, there are different ways to treat this now. The uh, laser treatment has been very successful. But lately, we've been doing injections of bleomycin, and injections of bleomycin have been very, very helpful. So, uh, and also, some people have treated this with sirolimus, so I, I don't know if that's helpful, but those are other modalities that can be used. Um, Dr. Will you can... Oh, you're amazing. Kayla is doing amazing since you removed her malformation, Cassie McDonald. Oh, great. Thank you. Nice to, um, nice to Mr. Yeah. M.J. Hayward, I have a port wine stain on my face and I've had two surgeries on my stomach so far. My stomach still hurts but don't know what to do now. Um, you, you're going to have to send me uh, photographs. I don't know what uh, surgery you've had and why you've had surgery. It's or not okay. usual to have surgery from a port wine First, stain. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, sorry about that. Uh, now, the, there's a question here concerning the child with enlargement uh, of a limb. Uh, the question is, will this continue to grow? I mean, the bottom line is that we do see an increase in girth or length, in other words, thickness or length. But typically, by the time you've noticed it, that's the discrepancy. It doesn't continue to get worse and worse and worse. In other words, we don't continue to see gigantism. So, um, you and know. That's, we'll, that's important for parents yeah. to know that. And so, Dana, Dana, thank you for sharing the video, our uh, live video. Um, so you're seeing some I'm not seeing. Yeah. Let's see if you can. Oh, okay. Josie Moore. Yeah, my son, Weinstein. Provided that the treatments that have been provided are adequate and that they've been done by somebody who, um, I don't know which, they, which they're looking at, yeah. uh, provided it's been done by somebody who knows what he or she is doing. And Josie runs our VBF Europe website, so yeah. she's in, in UK, um, and I can have her email you. Well, we post Dr. Wainer's email there is birthmark.org backslash Dr. or Wainer, W-A-N-E-R. Maybe, um, Josie, you should send him Okay, Oxford, England. Yeah, maybe you should send Dr. Wainer his pictures. And if you have the settings that they use for your son, that's really important. Okay, we'll go back. My lease had a deep angioma. On her face, she's been on propanolol for one year and five months and took her last dose about one year ago. She has a little asymmetry. Okay, so the Christine concerning your child's hemangioma, we can improve it. Uh, it's possible that your child will need surgery. If you send a photo, we'll have a look at it, and we'll give you an idea of, of what can be done. But we definitely can do something about this. Okay. Thank you, Christina. I'm trying to see. Um, I think because we have the two devices going, one's real time and one's lagging, so we're seeing... But different messages coming in. Yeah, it's possible okay. that they sing an image on one and, and right. they uh, Oh, is this my son, Zachary? Did we already answer that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's from Josie. Um, okay, Imad, you said you're lost. Um, does that mean you're not, we're, you, we're not on? We're not live? <laughs> Authorities in the world. You're welcome, Kwa. Kwachu. Um, okay, so if we're not answering your questions, it's because our Wi-Fi keeps going in and out. And there's nothing we can do about it. So if we haven't answered you, please resubmit your question. 
Dr. Wainer and I are here for, we have 35 more minutes. So, Megan Shively, you keep getting interrupted. Um, we, we can't do anything about it. It's the Wi-Fi in the hospital. We tested it. We thought it was going to work, but apparently it's not working that great. <laughs> Hi, uh, Katya. Thanks for letting us know that we're on. Well, I know we keep going in and out. Apologies. But we are getting some questions answered. We just do the best that we can. And we know the next time not to do it in this hospital. <laughs> right, Dr. Weiner? Yeah. So, um, uh, Six-month-old daughter born with an AV, M. Yeah, an AVM in her cheek with a large port wine stain on her face. We are waiting to see what we can do for the treatment. Just don't MRI it, and it's isolated to her cheek. What age is good to treat? We're from Australia. They're from Australia. Um, actually, the child with the port with the uh, AV malformation of the cheek and an overlying capillary stain, uh, the time to treat is now. You don't wait for port wine stains or for AV malformations to get worse. The time to treat it is when it's diagnosed. And uh, unfortunately, um, it probably will require some surgery and possibly some laser treatment. Uh, I'd be very happy to have a look at it. Yeah. If it's a focal, in other words, a localized lesion, it is possible to treat it very adequately. Uh, Jennifer Langford Tolton. Uh, you treated her yeah. son. He yeah, thank you very ago. much for the comment. I appreciate yeah. it. Now, Linda, Thanks. if you want, you can send Dr. Weiner the picture because I'm very suspicious, too, when they say AVM in a child with a port wine. So let Dr. Weiner look at it and assess it. It may be, it may, that may be very well what it is, or it may be a venous malformation in the cheek because it's kind of unusual for a baby to have a stain and a well, no, you, AVM you, in the cheek. You do sometimes get a, what we call a CMAVM or what I call a CMAVM, but you know, they're different types. So let, let me have a look at a photo of this yeah. and then I'll be able to tell which part of Australia are you from, which city. Yeah, I guess everyone's cutting in and out as well. So. Yeah, so we're, we're sorry because of our technical problems. You're cutting in and out for us, and we're just trying to catch up. What's, um, yeah. So this is Linda right here. That She's the one from Australia. Yeah. Oh, okay, so um, Linda is said done. I don't know what that means. Maybe they're not seeing us. Yeah. Uh, how many anesthesia per... Um, my daughter does not have... Expected response to pain. Have you seen this in other birthmark babies? I'm not, sure not sure what you mean, that, yeah. Nicola. What do you mean she does not have an expected response to pain? You mean she just does? She just tolerates it. How many oh, anesthesias with the ND YAG? Um, Is it dangerous? Okay, uh, neodymium YAG laser can be dangerous. So uh, one of the most important things is that the person who uses the neodymium YAG laser must know exactly how to do it. The risk of scarring is much greater, so therefore be very careful and make sure that the physician using the laser really knows how to use it. That's one of your patients, Aaron Smith Mosley, oh, Addison's I, uh, parents. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Mosley. Nice to see you. <laughs> saying hello. <laughs> yes, yeah, say and hello to uh, Addison for me, please. So Jennifer... Um, um, Jennifer Frederick said her daughter is 18 months, had laser for her port wine from 4 to 12 months. Would you need to put under now for treatments? When do you go back to keep port wine staying healthy or to keep from getting dark again? Like, what about maintenance okay. is what okay. she's asking. So, after a child has gotten maximum lightening of a port wine stain, they go into what's called a maintenance mode, meaning that they'll have maintenance treatment to try and maintain the good result. Now, this varies from patient to patient. Some patients will have maintenance treatment at um, two years, some will have it at four years, some will have, it, have to have it as soon as 18 months later. So it varies from patient to patient, unfortunately. Now, um, 
yeah, Meredith. One, yeah, yeah, she's the one who you did yeah. answer, so she might that that the child is having the <coughs> me, 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 miotomy. Yeah, me, miotomy. Yeah, the miotomy procedure is important, but we've lately found that there are other ways of treating KTS in that area, and uh, injections of bleomycin have been very helpful, and uh, so that together with rapamycin may actually be much more helpful. So that's something that needs to be considered. Oh, Goki Mustafa, he wants to know when we're going to be on again because his wife is sleeping. Um, we have a lineup for the rest of the year with a lot of specialists, but Dr. Wainer will definitely be on again. But we do have Dr. Nelson coming up in a couple weeks on our actual International Day of Awareness on May 15th. And then we also have Dr. Darrow and Dr. Rosen. So we'll let you know. Um, but you can also have your wife email Dr. Wainer directly. Jennifer never got 100%, maybe the information, um, said we could come back anytime but would need to put her under. He also said we could come back as she's four. Does this sound good then? Uh, never, how old, never, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer Frederick, how old is your daughter at the moment? Yeah, they didn't and get it And when was her last treatment? You know, I, I need to know this. Uh, message to Jessica Raya. Hi, thank you very much for, the, for checking in, and uh, thank you very much for your compliments. I appreciate it. So thank Jennifer you. will have to get back. Alex Porter said, I gather pulse dye laser only goes a certain depth. What do you do when... You have a resistant port wine stain in the chin area. Okay, that's a good question. Unfortunately, uh, treatment in the chin area doesn't work as well because the skin is much thicker. So what do you do? I guess we can try different lasers, but remember that uh, one of the problems with um, uh, uh, treatment with an alexandrite is that there's a higher risk of scarring. Um, but I would go to somebody experienced and let them try a different type of laser. Um, so Iman had another question to know about how much it would be for an injection of OK-432 in five days in the hospital? Yeah, um, I, I can't answer that because yeah, I'm not see. good at uh, arithmetic and I, I don't know the charges, but in Berlin you would have to ask Nurse Hoffman and she'd be able to tell you the exact cost. Um, okay, no port wine stain was never totally gone, so 18 months, right, okay. port wine stain wasn't. Okay, so uh, after 18 months, um, if the port wine stain looks like it's starting to get darker again, right. then you should go and see your physician. It's been six months since yeah. the last treatment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and by the way, the statistics are that, you know, not a large percent, 30 to 40 percent can get up to 90 percent clearance and very few get 100 percent. It can happen but the majority if you get 80 or 90 you consider yourself done and then you go on maintenance. Would Correct. you agree? Yeah. yeah. So Marwa El Shami, to get my email please contact Dr. Linda and she'll yep. forward it to you. So Des Mativa is seeing Dr. Tombris and they said they oh. hope you are doing well. So Oh, Mitchiva, hi, nice to Des see you. Mitchiva. Yes, Des say Mitchiva. hello to Dr. Tombris for me, please. Yeah. Um so Linda said six month old baby, we are in Sydney. Okay. And they say it's a CMAVM. Yeah. Possibly due to a RASA one, one abnormality. Gene. Ah. Yeah, so you need to get that tested. That that is very important. And uh if there is an underlying AV malformation under the capillary stain, it is important to get it treated. Uh, there are different forms of treatment. You can sclerose it, you can embolize it, or you can do surgery or a combination of everything. I prefer to do surgery because that's the only way that I can uh, stand a chance of getting a cure. So depending on how big the lesion is and exactly where it is, uh, you know, that will determine what sort of treatment we need. But uh, I'd be very happy to look at a, an, at, at a photograph of this and give you some sort of idea. Oh, yeah, Marwa. Um, Dr. Wainer, can, you can be in touch with him at birthmark.org backslash Wainer, W-A-N-E-R, and it'll go right through the VBF page. Um, and hello from Mississippi. 
Um, Jillian Vitelman said, is rapamycin the cream that helps with lightening? My daughter is too, and we do PDL every three months. Should I ask her doctor to prescribe this cream? No. Um, so the answer to Mrs. Tillman is the answer is no. You, your doctor will determine if it's necessary. We only use these creams if the port wine stain is not responding. If it is responding, then there's no there's no need to use these creams. The creams are only for resistant or non-responding port wine stains. Um, hi, Kathy from Florida. And Imad, the name of the hospital or the doctor there? I mean, I think she's talking about in, in Berlin. In Berlin, yeah. So contact me by via email, mm -hmm. and then I will put you in touch with the hospital. It's in Eberswalde, in, uh, just outside of Berlin, and uh, it's the... Um, um, Clinicum Barnum. It's the Verna Forsman Clinic in Eberswalde. Uh, Qua has another question. What about the D-dimmer in D -dimer, blood? D-dimer yeah. in the blood with the venous. Is this very dangerous? Okay, so the answer is uh, concerning D-dimer. The answer is yes, it can be very dangerous because if the D-dimer gets too high, there is a problem. So um, this is something that needs to be monitored and may actually need to be treated. Um, Heidi said that her son had a port wine on his chin and lip. He's 12, so puberty. Mm -hmm. And he had the lip reduction, but she said it didn't really reduce it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so one of the problems with lip reduction is that it can grow back. And uh, one of the problems is that perhaps the doctor didn't take enough uh, tissue. So the surgery probably should be repeated and uh, it should be done by somebody who does the surgery quite often. Now it can happen to me as well that you do a surgery and it really doesn't look like uh, enough has been done and under those circumstances more needs to be done. So. Um, Nicola Jane, um, I've been, you know, collecting data for 23 years, and I've never had any parent tell me that the child can touch hot things that has a birthmark and doesn't feel pain. I think these are two random probabilities. The other person that you met whose child has a birthmark that also appears to not sense pain, and your child, I've never heard of any connection, have you? No, it, no, I have not. Um, it, it it doesn't even have like a, a rational yeah, I mean no no it's I don't think it's related, related yeah. and and I don't know any condition or any birthmark that routinely gives this Josie oh she said um she's been asked many many parents um, they will not treat a child until two okay so concerning well, port wine stains yeah yeah concerning port wine stains I know that the uh, policy in the United Kingdom is somewhat conservative and treatment is not begun until two years of age. I, I don't really agree with this. I believe that uh, treatment should be given early. We start children as early as six months of age. By the time they're two or three we want to be quite far in the treatment so that uh, the birth the port wine stain is much lighter and I think this has got something to do with the need for anesthesia and the limitation on the number of treatment centers but we certainly start earlier in the United States yeah that's right Mary that's more of an appropriate response that people with a port wine do sometimes feel pain in their port wine mm -hmm. stain but um, the absence of pain which is what that mom was saying mm -hmm is something I, I don't know about. And then Anna Spring said yeah. her 18-month-old daughter has got a large micro-lymphatic malformation from under axial down to her waist. It's not Not disturbing, disturbing but it is a physical phys defect. Yeah, so, you know, the fact that there is a port wine stain, I'm sorry, that there is a lymphatic malformation uh, under her axilla and going down to her waist is something that should be watched very carefully. If it's not causing any problems, I guess you can leave it and, and watch and see what it does over time. Uh, we typically would advise treatment, but this is something that you and your doctor will need to decide. Um, this is real interesting, Jill Hart Kitson.
Hey everybody, it's Dr. Linda from the Vascular Birthmarks Foundation. Oh, I think we're, we're live on both. Uh, we're, we're doing our best here. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty at the hospital. Oh, I'm so glad I see a few thumbs up. That means a few of you are on. Um, so I've got one phone in my hand and Dr. Weiner's in front of the other one. Um, I'm not sure, I think we're on mine. It yeah, looks like both. we're on. We're, we're live. We're, we're live, live on live. both. Okay. All right, so you talk there. Okay, talk so there. today, um, <coughs> uh, May is vascular birthmarks months, and we want to welcome you all to uh, share your stories, post your, put on your birthmark pictures, and um, just be a part of our uh, awareness campaign for the month of May to let everybody know that not all vascular birthmarks go away and not all vascular birthmarks should be ignored. So today here with me is the world-renowned expert, Dr. Milton Weiner. As you all know, he did my daughter Christine's surgery 23 years ago and he's done thousands of cases all over the world. It's an and um, uh, you were, I'm just waiting for people to come on. Yeah, oh, we have, so see, I'm not, I'm not seeing them on here. Okay, um, oh wait, to see who our viewers are, swipe to the left, oh, okay, all right, swipe to the left, all right, I'm, so anyways, Dr. Weiner, can you see some comments coming in, because I can't ten, see any, ten people. ten people are watching, okay, I'm gonna try to see if I can, okay, we can start taking your questions, Natalie Vaden, Vedan joined, so please start sending your questions in for Dr. Weiner. Again, we're trying to work a little bit around some technical issues. Now you see yourself, but um, um, so Scott, I see you're there. Do you see me and Dr. Weiner, or do you just see me, Scott? Let me know, Scott, because um, Scott's already posted. Hi, Doc. Hi, Linda, and hi, Dr. Weiner. I'm just trying to see if people can see both of us. Oh, just me. So that means this is the one that's live. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, so there's Dr. Weiner. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Go ahead. All righty. Okay. Okay. So now, can you see Dr. Weiner now? Danny, can you see Dr. Weiner? And Scott, you should be able to see Dr. Weiner now. Uh, I'm waiting for a response. I hope You're it's. Response. Yeah, I just hope we're not losing it. Yes. yes. Okay, great. So, okay, um, we're ready to take your questions. Please post your questions. Yes, so it's coming across here. Okay. All right. All right, so any questions? Um, you, you'll have to. Yeah, I'm seeing some questions, so. What I, are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Here, hold this. So, um, oh, they, they're just saying they can see you, but I think that you're seeing the same ones. Yeah. I'm just going to take this out. Okay, oops. Sorry we're having some technical difficulties. Let's see if I can lean that. That's all right, I'll hold it. It's not a big deal. Because, um, I can hold it. And I can see the questions. All right, ten comments so far. We're not seeing the comments. I'm going to see why I'm not. My daughter has had several treatments with PDL. Her cheek is very resistant, and our doctor recommended we switch to Alexandrite. She's nine months old. Okay, that's, uh, that's a good point, and that's a good starting point. About somewhere around 10 to 20 percent of port wine stains are resistant to treatment. They don't respond. They don't respond well to any form of treatment. Some people will switch to Alexandrite or some other laser or some other technique. Unfortunately, Alexandrite doesn't seem to offer much of an advantage. There's a risk of scarring with Alexandrite, and I think the risk is slightly higher than it would be with a pulse dye laser. And there is no confirmed uh, tried and tested way to treat somebody with a port wine stain that's resistant. So my advice would be to wait. 
there are other modalities around the corner. Uh, people are toying with something called PDT. There are certain drugs which may be useful, and so it's possible that something comes up. But at this point, I wouldn't advise switching to Alexandrite. I think that uh, the risk of scarring is greater, and I don't really believe that it offers much of an advantage. So, Dr. Weiner, we have two questions that are similar. One wants to know if you go to Berlin, and the other one wants to know if you go to Ontario. Yeah, I go to Berlin every two months. In fact, I'll be there the end of next month, and uh, I'm happy to arrange to see patients. I do not go to Ontario. I, my in-laws live in Ontario, so I visit them, but uh, no, I don't see patients. But maybe you patients. could see a patient. Well, I, you're patient. not really supposed to oh. do that if, you, if you're not uh, licensed to practice. Um, Alicia wants to know if there's any updates on research for stubborn port wine, a topical treatment, or a new laser. Um, for stubborn port wine stains, there are topical treatments. At this point, there's two treatments. There's something. Uh, can you not hear? Am, am I holding the thing? No, I think you're okay. I just want to. Oh, there. All right. Okay. At this point, there are uh, two topical treatments which are somewhat useful. There's something called a miquimod, and uh, then there's rapamycin, which is a topical rapamycin. And uh, both of these seem to be useful. They're certainly being experimented with. Some people have reported uh, no improvement, whereas others have reported some improvement, especially with topical imiquimod. So those two modalities are a way to go. Certainly with uh, port wine stains, there is something called PDT, and PDT seems to be very, very uh, interesting. It's not FDA approved. And uh, I turned up the um, the speaker. Can you guys hear? Let me just make sure this. Maybe it's the speaker on this one is picking up the sound. Yeah, we should have brought your computer. You can't do it from a computer. Um, Can you guys hear now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. They can okay. hear. Yes. Okay. So. There was another question. Oh, yeah. now I'm covering the camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can you see Dr. Weiner or can you see me? Because we have two devices going. Point me towards research for the topic topicals. So uh, concerning research for topicals, there are two topicals. There's something called imiquimod. That's I-M-I-Q-U-I-M-O-D. And then there is topical rapamycin, which is R-A-P-A-M-Y-C-I-N. And uh, if you go to PubMed, you'll see several papers on these. I think there are a few more papers on miquimod, and that seems to be more popular today. And it does, the way these treatments work is that they... Oh, they can only see me. Okay. The way these treatments work is that they prevent vessels from coming back. So straight after a treatment, what happens is some of the blood vessels will start or new blood vessels will form and these imiquimod or rapamycin will act in preventing this from happening and in that way it enhances the treatment. But you can look it up online. There are some interesting So I just wrote that she sent an email about her son from Lebanon and everybody's saying everything's good now, so I think they're saying on okay, both. I'm just fine. not sure which way yeah. one is working. Okay. So uh, if you don't get a response from me, then uh, I think it's a good idea to send it to Linda, mm -hmm. and she'll prompt me and, and make sure that I get a response out. Yes. So please do that. But concerning uh, resistant port wine stains, it really is a problem, and uh, there is no uh, great solution. But um, I think the, the most important thing that we can do is we must realize that there are lights on the horizon, that there are new forms of treatment that are going to be available at some stage, 
And we will be able to do this. Oh, spell that Mick topical again. In Mickey Mod is yeah, it's I M I Q U I M O D in Mickey Mod. Um, the next person said that her son has a lymphangioma on the leg. Yeah. Do you have any comments about treatment for lymphatic malformations of the leg or? One the here. one in my hand. So let's just like, see if it moves. Can you all let us know if you can see us now? Is this working? Can you all hear us and can you all see us? That's right. Let's just get going. Well, if they answer, it takes a minute. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Now you'll now you'll see us and hear no. us. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, this, I don't know. One, <coughs> they both say live, but one's picking it up. And I think one's just not. leave. I think that one's picking up the image, and this one's probably picking up. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well. I can see you now. Okay. Um, we'll see if they can see you. Now you. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so I think you've got to keep both of them. I'm trying. Yeah, there okay. we go. All right. Spoke with Dr. Linda the other day. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, no, spoke with Dr. Linda the other day about two-year-old daughter who looks like she has Clipotronane. No one will MRI her to see what's going on. Should we push? Oh, and I think you're the family that I mentioned to see him in Berlin and that he could order the imaging. It's yeah. Yeah, so if I see you in Berlin, yeah. um, I can order imaging there. We can actually get it done very quickly within a day, and uh, we should be able to see exactly what's going on. So if you do come to Berlin and uh, do want to get imaging done, we can do this. This and is not yeah, a the, problem. The mom sent me pictures, and the baby has, like, blotchy cutaneous staining on the leg. Yeah. In the perianal area, there's a slight discrepancy in the lower legs, mm -hmm. but she's not getting any accuracy of diagnosis. So okay, no problem. I told her to see yeah. you in Berlin, and it's the end of June that yes. you'll be there? Correct. Okay, okay now I see... Delia Rooney has joined us from uh, Ireland. Hi. I have arranged uh, to have your daughter. I've actually uh, shown your daughter's pictures to a colleague of mine who works with me, and we're ready to go ahead and do her surgery. So contact me again, and we'll set up a date. I think we should do it this summer, and we will be able to do this. So Mrs. Rooney, just contact me and we'll set this up. Okay, um, your son has a tufted am angioma. He started serolimus. Do you know how long they take to shrink? Yeah, the, the answer to that uh, concerning serolimus and tufted angiomas, read this one as well. Okay. Uh, it's, it's concerning this, okay. you should start to see a response within a few weeks. So, you know, if it is gonna respond, and we know that tufted angiomas do respond. If it is going to respond, you should see something within a few weeks. So Christina Duncan is talking about her daughter has a port wine, but now the dermatologist thinks it might be a lymphatic lesion just under her eye. So it must be that there's some enlargement. Okay, if you send me a photograph and whatever information you have on it, I'll be able to take a look at it and, and give you some sort of advice. Uh, it should be easy to differentiate between a port wine stain and, um, and, and a lymphatic malformation. Um, Mara says that she has a birthmark, or hem she had a hemangioma, and she's getting plastic surgery right now with a skin graft mm -hmm. using silicone balloons. Um, about 30% removed of the hemangioma, you're still having surgery. Do you advise me to complete, I guess you mean complete the surgery? She'd have to send you pictures, right? Yeah, because I'd, you have to make sure of what, what it is. Yeah, I definitely have to see pictures. And Kristen, Kristen Torres, yeah, so your son's Port Weinstein, you do, we do sometimes see enlargement 
of a limb with just a simple port wine stain. So the way to see whether there is KTS or whether this isn't port wine stain, unfortunately, you have to do an MRI. An MRI will tell you whether it's a simple port wine stain or KTS. Um, the, Kwa Chu said her daughter has had four NDAG treatments, her left side of her face and tongue, <coughs> but we've had no MR, but we want to go to Berlin to visit you. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, in fact, if you do come to Berlin, uh, as I said before, we can do the MRI in Berlin at the time of the visit. You should uh, contact me or contact Linda and we'll put you in touch with whoever it is in Berlin who can set up the, the appointment. Um, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm trying to reconnect on my end. I'm hoping they're still seeing you. Oh, yeah, there we are. We we're back again. Sorry, everybody, I posted okay. that we're having problems. Um, thank you, Missy, for pointing out that after the question isn't answered, that, okay. Um, so, your six year old son is scheduled to have. Miatotomy. Miatotomy procedure this month. His KT, his KT syndrome is in his penile area, bottom of his right leg. We met at the Vascular Birthmarks Conference in October. Um, his doctor is at Rady's Children's Hospital. Rady's Children's. Mm -hmm. They know he needs the procedure, but unsure of the effects it could have from his KT. Um, you know, if he's got a stenosis. If there is a stenosis of the uh, uh, meatus, then he must have a meatotomy. And uh, there are different ways to treat this now. The uh, laser treatment has been very successful, but lately we've been doing injections of bleomycin, and injections of bleomycin have been very, very helpful. So, uh, and also, some people have treated this with sirolimus. So I, I don't know if that's helpful, but those are other modalities that can be used. Um, will you can? Oh, you're amazing. Kayla is doing amazing since she removed her malformation. Cassie McDonald. Oh, great! Thank you. Nice to um, nice to hear. Mr. M. J. Hayward, I have a port wine stain on my face, and I've had two surgeries on my stomach so far. My stomach still hurts, but don't know what to do now. Um, you, you're going to have to send me uh, photographs. I don't know what uh, surgery you've had and why you've had surgery. It's or not usual to have surgery from a port wine person. stain. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, sorry about that. Uh, now, the, there's a question here concerning the child with enlargement uh, of a limb. Uh, the question is, will this continue to grow? I mean, the bottom line is that we do see an increase in girth or length. In other words, thickness or length. But typically, by the time you've noticed it, that's the discrepancy. It doesn't continue to get worse and worse and worse. In other words, we don't continue to see gigantism. So, um, you know, that's, the that's important for parents yeah. to know that. And so, Dana, thank you for sharing the video, our uh, live video. Um, so you're seeing some I'm not seeing. Yeah. Let's see if you can. Oh, okay. Josie Moore. Yeah, my son had three treatments of his port wine stain with a laser in Oxford on his face. I've not seen improvements. Is this normal? So if the port wine stain has not improved after three treatments, it is not likely to improve, then I'm sorry to say it probably is a resistant port wine stain, provided that the treatments that have been provided are adequate and that they've been done by somebody who, um, I don't know which, they, which they're looking at, yeah. uh, provided it's been done by somebody who knows what he or she is doing. And Josie runs our VBF Europe website, so yeah. she's in, in UK. Um, and I can have her email you. Well, we post Dr. Wainer's email there is birthmark.org backslash Dr. or Wainer, W A N E R. Maybe, um, Josie, you should send him, okay, Oxford, England. Yeah, maybe you should send Dr. Wainer his pictures. And if you have the settings that they use for your son, that's really important. Okay, Miley, we'll go back. Miley had a deep um, demand geoma. On her face, she has been on propanol for one year and five months and took her 
last dose about one year ago. She has a little asymmetry. Okay, so the Christine concerning your child's hemangioma, we can improve it. Uh, it's possible that your child will need surgery. If you send a photo, we'll have a look at it and we'll give you an idea of, of what can be done. But we definitely can do something about this. Okay, thank you, Christina. I'm trying to see, um, I think because we have the two devices going, one's real time and one's lagging, so we're seeing but different messages coming in. Yeah, it's possible okay. that they're seeing an image on one and, and right. they are. Yeah. Oh, is this my son, Zachary? Did we already answer that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. That's from Josie. Um, okay, Imad, you said you're lost. Um, does that mean you're not, we're, you, we're not on, we're not live? <laughs> Authorities in the world. You're welcome, Kwa. <laughs> Kwa Chu. Um, okay, so if we're not answering your questions, it's because our Wi-Fi keeps going in and out. There's nothing we can do about it. So if we haven't answered you, please resubmit your question. Dr. Wainer and I are here for, we have 35 more minutes. So Megan Shively, you keep getting interrupted. Um, we, we can't do anything about it. It's the Wi-Fi in the hospital. We tested it. We thought it was going to work, but apparently it's not working that great. Hi, uh, Katya. Thanks for letting us know that we're on. I know we keep going in and out, apologies. But we are getting some questions answered. We just do the best that we can. And we know the next time not to do it in this hospital. Right, Dr. Weiner? Yeah. So, um, uh, six I, month old daughter born with an AV. M. Yeah, an AVM in her cheek with a large port wine stain on her face. We are waiting to see what we can do for the treatment. Just don't MRI it, and it's isolated to her cheek. What age is good to treat? We're from Australia. They're from Australia. Um, actually, the child with the port with the uh, AV malformation of the cheek and an overlying capillary stain, uh, the time to treat is now. You don't wait for port wine stains or for AV malformations to get worse. The time to treat it is when it's diagnosed. And uh, unfortunately, um, it probably will require some surgery and possibly some laser treatment. Uh, I'd be very happy to have a look at it. Yeah. If it's a focal, in other words, a localized lesion, it is possible to treat it very adequately. Uh, Jennifer Langford Talton. Uh, you treated her yeah. son. He yeah, thank you very ago. much for the comment. I appreciate yeah. it. Now, Linda, Thanks. if you want, you can send Dr. Wayner the picture because I'm very suspicious, too, when they say AVM and a child with a port wine. So let Dr. Wayner look at it and assess it. It may be, it may, that may be very well what it is, or it may be a venous malformation in the cheek because it's kind of unusual for a baby to have a stain and a well, no, you, AVM you, in the cheek. You do sometimes get a, what we call a CMAVM or what I call a CMAVM, but you know, they're different types. So let, let me have a look at a photo of this yeah. and then I'll be able to tell which part of Australia are you from, which city. Yeah, I guess everyone's cutting in and out as well. So. Yeah, so we're, we're sorry because of our technical problems. You're cutting in and out for us, and we're just trying to catch up. What's, um, yeah. So this is Linda right here. That She's the one from Australia. Yeah. Oh, okay, so um, Linda is said done. I don't know what that means. Maybe they're not seeing us. Yeah. Uh, how many anesthesia per... Um, my daughter does not have expected response to pain have you seen this in other birthmark babies not I'm sure, not sure what you mean I, yeah. nicola what do you mean she does not have an expected response to pain you mean she just does she just tolerates it how many oh, anesthesias with the nd yag um, is it dangerous okay uh neodymium yag laser can be dangerous so uh one of the most important things is that the person who uses the neodymium YAG laser 
must know exactly how to do it. The risk of scarring is much greater, so therefore be very careful and make sure that the physician using the laser really knows how to use it. That's one of your patients, Aaron Smith Mosley, oh, Addison's I, uh, parents. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Mosley, nice to see you. <laughs> Saying hello. <laughs> yeah, say and, hello to Addison for me, please. So Jennifer, um, um, Jennifer Frederick said her daughter is 18 months, had laser for her port wine from 4 to 12 months. Would you need to put under now for treatments? When do you go back to keep port wine staying healthy or to keep from getting dark again? Like, what about maintenance okay. is what she's okay. asking. Okay, so after a child has gotten maximum lightening of a port wine stain, they go into what's called a maintenance mode, meaning that they'll have maintenance treatment to try and maintain the good result. Now, this varies from patient to patient. Some patients will have maintenance treatment at um, two years, some will have it at four years, some will have it have to have it as soon as 18 months later. So it varies from patient to patient, unfortunately. Now, um, yeah, Meredith, one, yeah. yeah. She's the one who you didn't yeah. answer, so she might, that, that the child is having a <coughs> me, me, me miotomy. Yeah, me miotomy. Yeah, the miotomy procedure is important, but we've lately found that there are other ways of treating KTS in that area and uh, injections of bleomycin have been very helpful and uh, so that together with rapamycin may actually be much more helpful so that's something that needs to be considered. Oh, Goki Mustafa, he wants to know when we're going to be on again because his wife is sleeping. Um, we have a lineup for the rest of the year with a lot of specialists, but Dr. Wainer will definitely be on again. But we do have Dr. Nelson coming up in a couple weeks on our actual International Day of Awareness on May 15th. And then we also have Dr. Darrow and Dr. Rosen. So we'll let you know. Uh, but you can also have your wife email Dr. Wainer directly. Jennifer never got 100%, maybe the information. Um, said we could come back anytime, but would need to put her under. He also said we could come back as she's four. Does this sound good then? Uh, how never, old, Jennifer, never, Jennifer Frederick, how old is your daughter at the moment? Yeah, they and didn't get when it was her last treatment? You know, I, I need to know this. Uh, message to Jessica Raya. Hi, thank you very much for, the, for checking in and uh, thank you very much for your compliments. I appreciate it. So thank Jennifer you. will have to get back. Alex Porter said, I gather pulse dye laser only goes a certain depth. What do you do when you have a resistant port wine stain in the chin area? Okay, that's a good question. Unfortunately, uh, treatment in the chin area doesn't work as well because the skin is much thicker. So what do you do? I guess we can try different lasers, but remember that uh, one of the problems with um, uh, uh, treatment with an Alexandrite is that there's a higher risk of scarring. Um, but I would go to somebody experienced and let them try a different type of laser. Um, so Iman had another question to know about how much it would be for an injection of OK-432 in five days in the hospital. Yeah, um, I, I can't answer that because yeah, I'm not see. good at uh, arithmetic and I, I don't know the charges. But in Berlin, you would have to ask Nurse Hoffman and she'd be able to tell you the exact cost. Um, okay, no port wine stain was never totally gone, so 18 months, right, okay. port wine stain wasn't. Okay, so uh, after 18 months, um, if the port wine stain looks like it's starting to get darker again, right. then you should go and see your physician. It's been six months since yeah. the last treatment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and by the way, the statistics are that, you know, not a large percent, 30 to 40 percent can get up to 90 percent clearance and very few get 100 percent. It can happen, but the majority, if you get 80 or 90, you consider yourself done and then you go on maintenance. Would Correct. You agree? Yeah. yeah. So Marwa El Shami, to get my email, please contact Dr. Linda and she'll yep. 
forward it to you. So Desmativa is seeing Dr. Tambris, and they said they oh. hope you are doing well. So oh, Michiva, hi, nice to see you. Mitiva. Yes, Thank say you. hello to Dr. Tambris for me, please. Yeah. Um, so Linda said, six-month-old baby, we are in Sydney. Okay, and they say it's a CMAVM. Yeah. Possibly due to a RASA one abnormality. Ah. Yeah, so you need to get that tested. That that is very important, and. Uh, if there is an underlying AV malformation under the capillary stain, it is important to get it treated. Uh, there are different forms of treatment. You can sclerose it, you can embolize it, or you can do surgery or a combination of everything. I prefer to do surgery because that's the only way that I can uh, stand a chance of getting a cure. So depending on how big the lesion is and exactly where it is, uh, you know, that will determine what sort of treatment we need. But uh, I'd be very happy to look at a, an, at, at a photograph of this and give you some sort of idea. Oh, yeah, Marwa, um, Dr. Wainer, can, you can be in touch with him at birthmark.org backslash Wainer, W-A-N-E-R, and it'll go right through the VBF page. Um, and hello from Mississippi. Um, Jillian Vatelman said, is rapamycin the cream that helps with lightening? My daughter is too, and we do PDL every three months. Should I ask her doctor to prescribe this cream? No, um, so the answer to Mrs. Tillman is, the answer is no, you, your doctor will determine if it's necessary. We only use these creams if the port wine stain is not responding. If it is responding, then there's no there's no need to use these creams. The creams are only for resistant or non-responding port wine stains. Um, hi, Kathy from Florida. And Imad, the name of the hospital or the doctor there? I mean, I think she's talking about in, in Berlin. In Berlin, yeah. So contact me by via email, and then I will put you in touch with the hospital. It's in Eberswalde in uh, just outside of Berlin. And uh, it's the uh, um, Clinicum Barnum. It's the Werner Forsman Clinic in Eberswalde. Uh, Qua has another question. What about the D dimmer in D blood? D dimer, D -dimer yeah. in the blood with the venous. Is this very dangerous? Okay, so the answer is uh, concerning D dimer. The answer is yes, it can be very dangerous because if the D dimer gets too high, there is a problem. So. Um, this is something that needs to be monitored and may actually need to be treated. Um, Heidi said that her son had a port wine on his chin and lip. He's 12, so puberty. Mm -hmm. And he had the lip reduction, but she said it didn't really reduce it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so one of the problems with lip reduction is that it can grow back. And uh, one of the problems is that perhaps the doctor didn't take enough uh, tissue so the surgery probably should be repeated and uh, it should be done by somebody who does the surgery quite often now it can happen to me as well that you do a surgery and it really doesn't look like uh, enough has been done and under those circumstances more needs to be done so um, Nicola good. Jane, um, I've been, you know, collecting data for 23 years, and I've never had any parent tell me that the child can touch hot things that has a birthmark and doesn't feel pain. I think these are two random probabilities. The other person that you met whose child has a birthmark that also appears to not sense pain, and your child, I've never heard of any connection, have you? No, it, no I have not. Um, I, it, it doesn't even have like a, a rational, yeah, I mean. No, no it's, I don't think it's related, related and, and I don't know any condition or any birthmark that routinely gives this. Josie, oh, she said um, she's been asked, many, many parents, who, um, they will not treat a child until two. Okay, so concerning will port wine stains, yeah, yeah, concerning port wine stains, I know that the, uh, policy in the United Kingdom is somewhat conservative and treatment is not begun until two years of age. I, I don't really agree with this. I believe that uh, treatment should be given early. 
We start children as early as six months of age. By the time they're two or three, we want to be quite far in the treatment so that uh, the, birth, the port wine stain is much lighter. And I think this has got something to do with the need for anesthesia and the limitation on the number of treatment centers. But we certainly start earlier in the United States. Yeah, that's right, Mary. That's more of an appropriate response that people with a port wine do sometimes feel pain in their port wine mm -hmm. stain, but um, the absence of pain, which is what that mom was saying, mm -hmm is something I, I don't know about. And then Anna Spring said yeah. her 18-month-old daughter has got a large micro-lymphatic malformation from under axial down to her waist. It's not Not disturbing, disturbing but it is a physical, physical defect. Yeah, so, you know, the fact that there is a port wine stain, I'm sorry, that there is a lymphatic malformation uh, under her axilla and going down to her waist is something that should be watched very carefully. If it's not causing any problems, I guess you can leave it and, and watch and see what it does over time. Uh, we typically would advise treatment, but this is something that you and your doctor will need to decide. Um, this is real interesting, Jill Hart Kitson. She said Dr. Bly ordered an ultrasound and that, um, oh, sorry, I lost it, and that the ch her child is without the deep vein and that other doctors are saying that that vein really is there, it's not really missing. Um, I'm not sure what your question is. I'm trying to pull back up our, our live session, so I don't know if you can see me there. Um, okay, trying to get back on. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, Right. Yeah, we're having some technical difficulties. Just bear with us. See if you can um, read that. Can port wine stains be treated as an adult? Yeah, port wine stains can be treated as, as an adult. You can treat them at any stage. I had somebody come to me for the first time who was about 65 or 66 years of age and he got an excellent result and was very, very happy. So the answer is yes. We're still trying to, yeah, we lost I think, the question. Um, yeah. I think that the session just is gone, because see, here we are on our, our page here. We should be seeing us live. So we're seeing we're seeing you and your thumb. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Yeah. My um, daughter has Katie in the leg. She's 29, could debulking the foot area decrease the size? So, uh, Steve, Linda, the answer is yes. Debulking can decrease the size and is advisable. Uh, once again, provided the doctor knows how to do this and is comfortable with this. Um, concerning treatment for an adult, somebody who's not had treatment and decides as an adult to have treatment for a port wine stain, this can be done at any stage. So you can start, as I said, much later in life. This is, I'm just watching you yeah. from there. So let's see no, if we have any more questions. Mm. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. So we're gonna just... Okay, my daughter has a congenital hemangioma uh, attached to the carotid artery. How would you recommend surgery? So. Um, this is a carotid body tumor or um, some sort of uh, congenital vascular lesion attached to the carotid artery. Um, I think that uh, it's very important that a head and neck surgeon who does this type of surgery do the surgery. Sometimes it's embolized before, sometimes it's not. This depends on the surgeon and the circumstances, but I definitely would uh, recommend surgery. Oh, Steve and Linda just wanted to say Dr. Rosen yeah. is her doctor. It doesn't yeah. get any better than yeah, that. Yeah, Dr. Right? Rosen is one of the world experts, so uh, he knows all about KTS. Yeah, and she's in good yeah. hands. You're in very, very good hands. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple more minutes. Um, but if you, but concerning, uh, concerning debulking, um, you can discuss this with Dr. Rosen. 
He usually refers his ca these cases to me, and we can do this. Okay. I'm not seeing anything, and I'm not sure if... Oh, there we go. Her daughter has had many laser procedures and two invasive surgeries on her upper lip hemangioma, two debulkings with Dr. Levitin. Okay, so the person, yeah, uh, Ashley, Ashley picks, picks Carol. Carol, yeah. Um, it is still really large. That's really yeah. surprising. So, uh, Miss Carol, I would be happy to have a look at your daughter or look at photos. It should not still be large after two debulkings. So, let me take a look at it and I really will get back to you. So if you send me an email or send it through Linda, through Dr. Linda, then uh, I'll take a look at it and see what we can do and see how I can advise you. Mary Westmoreland, yes, Dr. Rox Anderson is at the MGH Hospital in Boston and he's one of the top laser experts in the world. Yeah, I agree with you. Dr. Anderson is the guy who developed the pulse dye laser, who certainly was involved <laughs> Ashley, in developing. Yeah. Ashley's been dying. Ashley, I'm just even wondering, you know, if this is really a hemangioma, maybe they, something was missed. Because every time he debulks it, it just comes back with a vengeance. So I think you need to send um, that, the picture and some information. Dr. Wainer's getting your information now. But um, you need to send it to Dr. Wainer. And if you don't hear back, Ashley, just contact me and um, I'll make sure that he gets it. Hi, Katya. So happy to see how wonderful your daughter is doing. I just want you to know, too, that we're using her to talk about being done by one. Um, like our daughter should be put under, and is it expensive if we come see you in Germany? So Roy lasered her head yeah. to toe, yeah. no anesthesia. She's older now, she's one. They want to know if they go see you in Berlin, you know, how expensive is it going to be? Well, you know, you can do, you can see me in Berlin, but there's also uh, Dr. Carsten Phillips in Berlin as well at the Elizabeth Hospital, and they do a tremendous amount of laser treatments, and they have a lot of experience. So uh, my suggestion is if you want to have treatment without anesthesia, you should go to Dr. Carsten Philip at the Elizabeth Hospital and you can tell him I sent you. Oh, yeah, Marcella wants to know about will Sirolimus decrease the size of a KTS leg of her daughter? Okay, Sirolimus may or may not decrease the size of the leg. Usually it does not decrease the size of the leg. It may slow bleeding down and do other things, but it usually does not. Um, uh, it does not do that. Okay, so this is uh, uh, Catherine Elizabeth, 23-month-old, yeah. port wine, V1, V2. She's received treatment every four to five weeks and seven months. She's seen good clearance, but progress is slowing. What would you recommend? Okay, so Catherine, Elizabeth Catherine, um, if the progress is slowing, this is normal. Because right in the beginning, when the port wine stain is fresh, and hasn't been treated, you get the maximum clearance. And then as time goes on, the amount of clearance diminishes with time or with each treatment. So it's the law of diminishing returns, and this is pretty normal. Um, so unfortunately, you've just got to keep going until you get to the point where the birthmark has maximally cleared. That should take somewhere between 6 and 12 treatments. And once you get to that point, you then go into your maintenance mode. <coughs> oh, how come your finger works? Uh, we saw yeah. it, that's who we saw in Parma, oh, Sirolimus. My, my daughter is a patient of Dr. Meyer in Berlin. We've done five treatments till she was three. Now five, I would like to continue with treatment. Should I go to, I can't see the rest of it. Oops, can't see the rest of it. Um, Florina oh, yeah, Aziri Murati. Okay, so, oh, should, should you mentioned your, say. 
should I go? And to continue with treatment, should I go to Dr. Meyer or another, the, the other doctor that you mentioned? Oh, uh, if you're seeing Dr. Meyer, you should go to Dr. Meyer. So that's fine. Um, that's what I would recommend. Megan Johnson's three-month-old has large hemangioma on her arm, the shoulder to the wrist. I've seen, I think, her pictures. She's on propranolol and is getting lasers. Her arm is ulcerating in two areas, and her last laser she screamed about an hour after treatment. She's now on topical antibiotics, topical timolol, and a topical steroid. Doctor wants to laser again. Okay, um, you know, I would like to see a photo of this of uh, Miss Johnson, of your child's yeah, in mangioma. You know, it is possible that uh, we can do surgery and get rid of the ulcers. So I'd like to see this. I think this is very important. Should you undergo another laser treatment? I'm not sure if the laser yeah. treatments haven't helped. And if she's then, in pain. <clears throat> then I'm not sure if uh, doing another laser treatment yeah is the right way to go. Yeah, Megan, you can email Dr. Wayner at birthmark.org backslash Wayner, or you can get, you know, I'll, you know, write to me through Facebook or whatever, and I'll make sure that he gets the pictures. I do remember seeing them, and I was concerned that you were going to continue laser because it just keeps breaking down. But there are things, right, that you can do when these Sure. Hemangiomas just sure. continue to ulcerate. You know, I mean, one of the things is uh, that a lot of doctors forget is that surgery can sometimes get rid of ulceration. And so that is something that we should consider, especially if it's a focal hemangioma. So I've, I've gone okay, through these. Megan here. Johnson. Okay. Uh, we want to treat under anesthesia because she's no longer handling without the with the no anesthesia well. Yeah. Is anesthesia expensive? No, it's not. It depends where you get it done. She's in um, Europe. Okay. Um, it should not be expensive. It depends on the DRG that they use and where you get it done. I know that we can do it fairly cheaply here in the States. We have... Uh, well, she was going to Roy yeah. and had a really good discount plan, but the treatments were all without anesthesia. Okay. Now, we can do anesthesia. We can arrange uh, some sort of discount, and we can do quite a lot. So I think get in touch with me online, and, and I'll be able to point you in the right di direction. Patricia Huntsman... Um, I'm not too sure if you saw my last video, video. I'm nearly 40 and have a facial birthmark. Um, Miss Huntsman, if you, uh, if well, you, she does have the blebs. Yeah, they're getting I, it's She's very, in Chicago. yeah, very, very important to start treatment now because the blebs will only get worse. And um, I'd be happy to take a look at a photo. She's on state insurance. Yeah. So yeah. maybe Jerry Garner. Dr. Maybe. Jerome Garden in Chicago has had a lot of experience, and there are people in his practice. And he can accept yeah. her insurance. Correct. So that's who I would recommend. Or she can send it to you. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Okay. Very thankful. Marina, very thankful, Dr. Luna, because Dr. Nelson, their daughter, was born. She had no knowledge. <coughs> Glad we can help. That's what it's all about. Please come to Poland. Yeah, no, we were I... supposed to come cl pretty close. We were we were supposed to go to Ukraine, well, and, or no, we were going we were going to go. Um, yeah, we were going to go somewhere, but now we're changing where we're going. So we will come. Okay. We will come. We were supposed to, but our schedules got changed. We've we've been to in Italy and. Russia and India and Israel and we do want to come to Poland. Okay, we have a few more minutes. Yeah. We have uh, seven more minutes to take some questions. Again, I apologize for all of the technical difficulties that we have. These are always learning lessons. <coughs> when we did it at Lenox Hospital the first time, we had no technical difficulties, but these yeah. old buildings sometimes can interfere with Wi-Fi. So once again, many apologies. Um, thank you, Dr. Weiner, for changing my life. Courtney Patton. Oh, hi, Ms. Patton. Nice to, nice to hear from you again. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So thanks for sending a message. I appreciate it. Thank you. Couple more minutes, everybody. How old is Courtney now? I think you mean Courtney, was it Courtney? Yeah, Courtney. Was it she was the yeah. one or was it her child? Yeah. Oh. 28. Wow, that makes <laughs> that makes me very old. You are old. <laughs> You're getting old, Dr. Weiner. Yeah, and I like to hear that. Uh, these live sessions are really great. Thank you both so much. I have lived with my birthmark 56 years. Where you're very welcome. Okay, you asked Miss um, Westmoreland. About starting treatment. Yeah, you asked about starting treatment. I mean, there are people in Boston. You know. Oh yeah. There's Rock. Rox Anderson. Rox Anderson is excellent. Yeah. And there are a whole bunch of doctors who know how to do pulse dye laser treatment. There's Dr. Tan at the Mass Eye and Ear Infirmary who has enormous experience and uh, does a tremendous amount of treatment. So I would definitely see Dr. Tan or Dr. Anderson and you can get treatment really very, very efficiently. Um, Katya, um, we can talk more um, through messaging about getting the laser treatment. So just let's you and I work on that offline. Um, we love, we all love you guys too. And remember, I'm gonna uh, close it down now because we're about ready to shut off. So. I want to thank you all for giving Dr. Weiner this time and for putting up with our technical difficulties. And remember that May is Vascular Birthmarks Awareness Month. I've and May, mine. Dr. Weiner's got his pin on. Let's show you his pin right there for vascular. Anyone making a donation during the month of May gets a free pin. Remember to read the Buddy Booby Birthmark book during the month of May. And don't forget, most of all, to put on your birthmark. We're looking for 30,000 people this year. Last year we had 10,000 people put a red heart on their face. This year we need 30,000, and we know that we can do it. We will be live again on May 15th, our Day of Awareness with Dr. Stuart Nelson in California with a VBF board member and with Missy Scott, the person responsible for our website and keeping us going over the last 20 years. So thank you all, and we will be back in touch next month, and remember to raise awareness.